It tells the whole yeah. story yeah. of the fifties and the way people's lives were were destroyed. They were, they were destroyed. and there were folk singers involved too, including Pete. You had a you had the uh, autobiography of uh, Theo Bakel with you. too. Yes, right. I tell you, let's talk about him. But okay, how but, about playing a song first? You, you have yeah, your sure. Japanjo with you. you. What do you want? You have yeah. you have I'll a tell long you more neck. about Theo and the blacklist. Okay, but you have a, a Vega long neck banjo. That seems like a rare banjo. It is a rare bit. There's only five in the world. No. <laughs> yeah, it was, and I'd written to Pete. I because when Fr- Pete first met me, I I had no musical training at all, and uh, he said you ought to have. We had a fellow fellow who played a mando cello, and he played it like a guitar. It's the cello of the mandolin family, and he played it like a guitar, which was fine. So we got this television show, and I said in three months I'm going to play the banjo. So I bought one at a at a used uh, instrument shop. I learned how to play in three months and did it on television. Then Pete came back about a year and a half later. He came with a book that says how to play the five-string banjo, a record and a book. So I had those, and I learned really how to play. And then <clears throat> what happened was I said, i got to get a banjo. So he knew the people in Boston because he was from uh, Boston yeah. and the Vega Company. I said, I'll get you one. He sent it to Buffalo. Because uh, otherwise we'd have to go through customs. We'd have to play duty on it. Right so to- <laughs> instead I drove to Buffalo with my old banjo, left my old banjo in Buffalo, and virtually threw it away. Oh, very Put the new banjo in the back of the car. <laughs> it's beyond re- redemption now, and no. I, I don't think I'm liable. For- so that's how I got the banjo. <laughs> then I found I was doing a television show, and somebody caught it, and he said, and he wrote me an email, and, uh, and he said, that banjo is really rare. Peggy Seeger has one mm-hmm. uh, from Chicago. Mike Settle has one. Uh, Dave Gard had one from the Kingston Trio. And the fifth one, I never found out where it was, but he said there's five. How exciting is yeah. that? So it's, it's nice to have, and, and I just had it in for its 60 years uh, checkup. <laughs> uh, Jerry Gray is here, a member of the Travelers, which is the Canadian Weavers, and you're the banjo part. I guess you're the Pete Seeger part. Yes, right. And I and I, my voice is pitched the same as Pete. I loved singing harmony and singing the top harmonies the same same way Pete did. Uh, so you know, it, 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 in many ways, I do sound like him. Uh, but that's a compliment, and I take yeah. that uh, quite seriously. We'll play a song, Jerry, and we'll talk. Well, more. I can't. I can't play. Too much. I'll, I'll play a song. Just what, uh, what would Pete Seeger do? <laughs> oh, here's the story of Pete and Woody. Okay. Woody and Pete came to uh, uh, Woody came to New York City. Pete was already there, and they got together. And Woody had a radio show, and he, uh, 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 and then he said, oh, "I'm going to I'm going back to Oklahoma." So he says, "Pete, you want to come along with me?" And uh, Pete says, "Sure." Pete had dropped out of college, and he was. Here, here's his mentor coming in, and they're going to tour together. They end up in Oklahoma, and they're singing at a a union rally in uh, in in right near Woody's hometown. And a woman comes up and says, "Woody, you write all kinds of songs, but you never write songs about the most important people in a union." So he says, "What's that?" He says, "The ladies' auxiliary." So, that I'll write a song. I got a few minutes. So he wrote this. Oh, the ladies' auxiliary. It's a good auxiliary. It's the best auxiliary that you ever did see. If you want an auxiliary, join the ladies' auxiliary. Join the ladies' auxiliary. Well, the lady was not pleased with oh, that no, thing. Oh, that's So great. instead, uh, Woody was funning with her. He just yeah. ripped that off quickly. But in the same, about 10 minutes later... Pete and Woody sang, There once was a union maid Who never was afraid Of the goons and the ginks and the company finks Deputy sheriffs who made the raids She went to a union hall When a meeting it was called When the company boys came around She always stood her ground Oh, you can't scare me I'm sticking to the union I'm sticking to the union Sticking to the union Whoa! You can't scare me. I'm sticking to the union. Sticking to the union till the day I die. There's more verses, but the one that's up to date because married life ain't hard. Even with a union card, you gotta stand on your own two feet and not be a servant of the male elite. It's time to take a stand. Start working hand in hand. There is a job that's gotta be done and a fight that's gotta be won. 
Oh, you can't scare me. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. Oh, you can't scare me. I'm sticking to the union. Sticking to the union till the day I die. All right, Jerry Gray. Uh, it's so I hear that and I just get chills because I think of Pete Seeger and the uh, legacy. You, you have left, to. You, know? you have to. Uh, and I do. Uh, I started a lecture series uh, many years ago, about 18 years ago, and I came down to Florida, and uh, I, I, sh- I taught five years at FAU. 